Are you hungry but don't know what to cook? HelloFresh Canada is here to help. Have a whole delicious meal's worth of wholesome ingredients, plus a simple-to-follow recipe, all delivered right to your Canadian home. There are vegetarian options and plans for single people and families, too. I've tried this. It was great. Visit HelloFresh.ca for more information and menu options, and use the promo code CREATIVE50, that's creative with a K, 50, for 50% off your first order. Creative Control once again acknowledges the support of FreshBooks, a cloud accounting software for small business owners with some truly thoughtful features that you'll love. Try it free for 30 days. Go to freshbooks.com slash creative control and in the how did you hear about us section, enter creative control. That's creative with a K and control with a K. Organize your money and get paid faster with FreshBooks. I think being an American is a pre-existing condition. (laughs) My hair used to be black. Now every year white hairs show up. Next year more white hairs moving in. Makes me mad, makes me sad, because it means my head is getting gentrified. (laughs) There's nothing I can do to stop it. Pretty soon I won't be able to afford it. I keep moving forward because I'm an American. Judah Friedlander is an author, actor, and comedian based in New York City. Known for various film and television roles, including 30 Rock, where he was a cast member, and American Splendor, which earned him an Independent Spirit Film Award nomination, Friedlander is most at home on stage doing stand-up around the world. Netflix has just released a stellar original comedy film by Friedlander called America is the Best Country in the United States, and he and I connected recently to discuss this film at great length. Sponsored by Fresh Books, Hello Fresh Canada, Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, Planet Bean Coffee, and Granddad's Donuts. This is the brilliant Judah Friedlander on the 365th episode of Creative Control with your host, me, Vish Khanna. I just wrote a movie about a pinata that comes back to life and then <laughs> murders all the children that feed him the stick. That's right, I said her. It's pinata, not pinata. Okay? <laughs> Pinatas are females who have been getting abused by children at the encouragement of parents for centuries. Hi, Judah. How's it going? Hey, I'm okay. How you doing? I'm not bad. I'm not bad. I, uh, I, I really, really, really loved your special. Oh, thanks a lot, man. I'll just, I'll just let you keep talking. <laughs> well, I want to ask about, uh, it's, it's called America is the Greatest Country in the United States. And I guess, first of all, what was the competition there? How did America become the greatest country in the United States in your eyes? Well, it just goes to show you that uh, we're always number one, no matter where this competition is taking place. It doesn't matter that, I mean, I, I guess my, 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 the point of my question is, who are the other competitors in this race to be number one? Yeah, well, that the title means that, you know, we're number one in our own country. Okay, um, okay, that's fair. I mean, But, uh, you know, the, the joke being, you know, one thing I... I find in in the U.S. is there's this propaganda, and I see it from you know the two major political parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, mm-hmm. and I also see it from the mainstream media uh, and the government. You know where we are taught that this is the greatest country in the history of Earth. Yes, and. Uh, we're also taught that, you know, when there's an election, we're electing the leader of the free world. And I always thought it was like, I wonder why, why are we the only country that gets to vote for the leader of the free world? <laughs> and I guess it's because we're number one. Yeah. I guess that's why. Yeah. Because we're the best. So. I, I, you know, nationalism, patriotism, they, they play on different emotional impulses. Uh, for yeah. some reason, your country seems very insecure. Uh, I don't, and it seems that the current leadership, I mean, confident, insecurity is a manifestation of some kind of confidence or vice versa. Maybe I got that mangled. Yeah, but, well, I don't, I think the U.S., you know, it, it kind of has a, uh, a superiority complex. Um, you know, it, it's fine to have pride and everything, but really, I mean, it's really basically propaganda where it's like, you know, you're raised, and always reminded that we're the greatest uh, in the world. Period. Yeah, 
And if there is any problem, it must be due to to someone else's fault. It couldn't be our own. There's got to be something else, you know, or maybe it's the Democrats who are doing it. Maybe it's the Republicans who are doing it, or, uh, you know, maybe it's those foreigners who are doing it. It can't be us, you know. Yeah. We, we can't have any fault. Yeah, well, one thing I say, I don't say to my act, but I think it kind of sums us up sometimes, is that, you know, we're, we're very good at looking out the window. We're not look good at looking in the mirror. And, you know, when, when you have this, you know, this, this American exceptionalism, and like I said, having pride, confidence, that's fine. But you got to, you know, we all share this planet, and you have to look at things in a sharing way and in a realistic way. And, you know, when, when you're always taught, like if you're, if you're an American and you're always taught that your country is the greatest at everything, I think it throws a lot of people for the loop if they buy into that mm-hmm. and then that they have any problems. Because if you're, let's say, you know, if you're an American and, and you're struggling or having some kind of problem, well, I mean, this is the number one country. It's the best in the world. How, how can... How can life be tough or unfair or corrupt if, if you're in the best place? And, and so I think it, it causes a lot of people to, to look in the wrong places for the right answers. Yeah, the, you, you, if you're swayed by such rhetoric, you end up putting like abject faith in an idea as opposed to something tangible and real. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then often people are misguided and put all the blame where it's not, you know. And it seems to me that your country has recently elected the personification of this sort of... Yes. Yeah, this approach to life. It, oh, definitely. And, and the other thing that's also... that can be dangerous about, you know, who, who's president... And, I, you know, I think he's someone who, who represents the worst in humanity, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but another thing that can be dangerous is that, okay, you have him as president now... It's very. It's, it becomes easier to see problems and things that are wrong, but this could also be, you know, a symptom of the American exceptionalism that makes you blind to America's problems. You know. Yeah. You know, like I, I think there's still a lot of people who are anti-Trump. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I'm I'm very anti-Trump, obviously. Mm-hmm. But you know, some people I think are anti-Trump, and they still think everything was kind of perfect before he got in office. Yeah. And if he wasn't in office, things would have just, let's just go back to normal and perfect. Well, it's like, okay, tr- Trump's awful. I think he's horrendous. I, I can't think of a worse president we've had, you know. Uh, but, you know, he did not invent racism. He did not invent uh, uh, no health care. He did not invent climate change. He did not invent sexism. He did not invent mass incarceration, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now, does he make many of these things worse? Yes. But these aren't problems that are exclusive to him. No, but I do think that he typifies um, uh, 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 the, the zeitgeist in the sense that it feels like everything is out in the open now. Uh, you know, he is someone who says things he shouldn't say, and now uh, that has opened up the floodgates, I think, in a positive way. People feel compelled to speak out yeah. about everything, and that's what yeah, we're seeing right now. Like you know, with with Bernie running and putting out, a, you know, I think Bernie opened up a lot of people's eyes, you know, to certain issues. You know, like like healthcare, for example, talked about how look what these other countries are doing. Yeah. Uh, it's a good thing. We should do that too. You know, um, where you know, I, I can't think of any other presidents who, or you know, politicians who used to do that or who've done that. You know, right. Um, so, I mean, just doing that was like, you know, I mean, even, even the Democrats would, would, you know, look down on him for like, what are you doing? Are you crazy? You know, mm-hmm. so, you know, so it's, uh, so I think, you know, the combination of, of him talking about some of these real issues and then Trump, you know, being just the polar opposite in so many ways, I think the past year and a half, a lot of people in the U.S., you know, have, uh, woken up some yeah at least not maybe not to all the issues but to certainly some of the issues yeah it's interesting i think people feel empowered uh, are feeling empowered to talk about everything right now i mean i yeah. think we're seeing that in if i can call it your industry uh certainly we've been rocked by 
the entertainment industry has been rocked by this outspokenness with the, too. With the sexual assaults, yeah, we're talking about and the sexual harassment, yeah, yeah. You know, and I th- and I think all these things are in some ways related because these are all, you know, major major human rights issues that we're talking about. Whether it's Black Lives Matter, whether it's the you know the hashtag Me Too, you know, with you know people. Uh, I mean, I remember talking to my mom just just a week or two ago about. You know these about the Harvey Weinstein thing, and then the sexual assault uh, charges being brought against him, and all the you know dozens and dozens of women speaking out against him. And I remember my mom; she was she was kind of like a little annoyed that it was getting so much press because she had no hope, or very very little hope, that any of this would stick or that this would become a movement that would uh, go on to other people as well. Mm -hmm. Because she's so used to, you know, basically being oppressed, you know, as a gender being abused and people speak up and nothing happens and nothing changed, nothing gets better. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to her, I said, I think this is a huge thing because it's it's bigger than Harvey Weinstein. I think this is a moment that that has a good chance of becoming a movement and actually creating some change. My, my, and, yeah. and it seems like that's what's happening, and that's that's amazing. My colleague at work today was asking me about the Louis C.K. situation because she knows I'm a comedy fan and a writer, uh-huh. and I've covered Louis, and, and I said, you know, I feel badly because I knew... Uh, I mean, I've heard this these stories for years, and I think I, for whatever reason, ignored it. Yeah. You're, you're in the industry. You, you've heard these things. Is any of this shocking to you? Uh, well, first of all, I, I don't think anything's shocking to me. Secondly, from what you're saying, you might actually know more than I do. Hmm. I, I, I first heard things about him a year or two ago when I read an article in Gawker. Right. It was talking about Jed Kirkman doing a podcast and alluding to him, not saying his name, and then something like a week later, she takes the podcast down. Right. And then when I read that article, I think that linked to another article, which was from a year or two earlier, where Gawker was trying to do some kind of investigation and kind of got shut down yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so that is all I ever heard. I never heard anything firsthand or secondhand. Uh, but that's not surprising because e- even in the comedy world, let's say there's two comics and they're going out, I'm generally the last to know or hear about it. <laughs> right. I'm not someone who's connected on a uh, personal level to that many comics. Okay. You know, okay. I have, I have, you know, maybe maybe one comic I talk to on a regular basis. Um, and I'm friends with uh, a small few, mm-hmm. and we're not even really that close when it comes to anything personal. So I'm I'm kind of a loner and an outsider within the comedy world. Right. Um, so I and Louis not someone who who uh, I'm friends with. Uh, so it's 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 stuff that uh, I had heard through reading stuff, and I'm glad that. Uh, the women who have come forward have come forward. If there's more, I hope they all come forward. Yeah. And I support all of them 100%. Well, on that note, I want to actually get back to your special because sure. uh, I, I am struck by the fact uh, that it's produced and directed in a very unique way. And also you've done something, I think, quite unique in terms of temporality. It's not a, it's not a single show. It's from different points in time, from 2016 and 2017. We'll talk about your approach to actually constructing uh, uh, America is the greatest country in the United States. Yeah, well, you know, this is the first project I've released, and I made it myself, and I had to make it myself. Um, and, you know, I, I had special, I had offers to do specials and albums before, and I always turned them down because I didn't like uh, the creative restrictions, you know, whether it could be certain words or subjects they didn't want you to talk about. 
and I didn't like some of the legalities of the contract, where in the past it had been where the whoever whatever company you know wants to own it and produce it, they own that. Not only do they own that footage, that filmed footage, they actually own all the words that you say. Oh, the content. And I was always huh. like, you don't get the right to own what I say and what I wrote. You know, if you want to own that piece of filmed stuff, I'll give you that, but I'm not going to give you my writing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I always turn it down. And then I had my own, you know, psychological hangups for why I didn't do it, you know, being, you know, too much of a perfectionist where it's like, well, if I don't do it just right, I, I don't want to release it, you know. Sure. Um, so I have on my own, you know, mental hangups about just delaying things. And then, you know, I would have my own depression issues with trying to make my own stuff. You know, like if, you, if you're having, you know, depression issues or OCD or ADD, which uh, I certainly have those on, on some levels at some times. OCD, I, I probably have, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of the times. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, so it, it, that can, that can, those can be big blocks for you to getting things done because if you're depressed, and then you have to all of a sudden go to a room and sit down and then just listen to yourself and watch yourself, and you're already depressed. That's, that's only going to make you more depressed. That's yeah. a hard bump to get over. So I kind of just forced myself to get over those, and uh, I started piecing my own thing together. And I never really liked the way – when I've done stand-up shows on various TV, she- TV shows before, I've pretty much always hated the way it came out. Uh, it was always kind of a, a superficial setup from the beginning, and the way it was filmed and lit and the sound, it was all just kind of fake, the way these things were produced. And I, and I never liked them. And I'm like, I want to capture a real experience. So I, I filmed sets for over a year, a lot of sets, and and over that period of time, I kind of figured out a way that I thought works that, that best captures the performance and is the most realistic because I wanted it to feel like you're just kind of sitting in a room, you know, like you just walked into a little room yeah. at night and you're just watching a comic from you know ten feet away. So that's how I wanted to try to make it, and uh, so I did my best in trying to pull that off. And uh, yeah, so then you know most of the film is is from this past spring, and. I always viewed it as a film, you know, it's a, it's basically a, a feature length stand up performance film. Yeah, it's an hour I and mean, a half. It's black it's beautiful black and white and, and interesting uh interesting kind of cinematography, uh, interesting shots. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Um and so then I you know, I, I made it myself, finished it, and then you know, the agent started pitching around and it sold it to Netflix and uh you know, they they call it a I think it's a Netflix original comedy special, you know, so it's called a special, but it's, it's basically a stand-up performance film. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, you know, I, I kind of, this, you know, stand-up is the most personal thing I do and it's the most, you know, artistically important thing I do and it's my main thing, you know, it's what I do. And so I had to, I'm like, why give all that creative stuff over to some giant company that doesn't know you? Yeah. And let's, Let's just make it myself and figure out a way to do it. So that's what I did. Took a lot longer that way, but um, you know, I have my you know imperfections. I think with the project, but I think overall, I'm I'm happy with it. I, and uh, you know, and the point is, I just I just want to get the stuff out there. You know, because even even in the movie, there, there's lots of scenes. You know, where I'm like, oh, I've definitely. Like, even now, you know, even after I filmed it, I'm like, I, I do that bit so much better now. You know, I, yeah, I found sure. a way to tweak it and, you know, or elaborate on it, do it better. But I'm like, you know what, you got to just get it, film it, and, and just get it out there, you know. And now it's time to move on and do new and different material. Anyone from far away? Or uh, where are you from? Guatemala. It's, Guatemala's not that far. <laughs> I was actually there this morning. <laughs> I was gonna fly in for the show tonight, but it was nice out, so I parkoured my way over here. And you see, I care about the planet. I don't use up carbon footprints, just real footprints. What else? Who else? Mexico. It's pronounced Mexico. Mexico. 
Mexico. Where in Mexico? Monterrey. Mm-hmm. It's Monterrey. Monterrey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I used to live right in downtown Monterrey, Mexico. What part? I lived on First Street. I'm sorry, it was Uno Street. It was Uno Street. <laughs> The number one street in Monterey, Mexico. That's why it's called Uno Street. Welcome. So great to have you here. With you. you you mentioned perfecting bits or or refining bits, uh, but one of the things that I marvel at, and I know it's an edited together film, but one of the things I really marvel at is your crowd work when you're doing kind of the geographic crowd work. Yeah, it's so yeah. fast, it's so quick, and I can't believe. <laughs> First of all, your breadth of knowledge of, you know, countries around the world is astonishing. Uh, is that a frequent part of your act, just that, that kind of crowd work? Yeah, you, yeah. Know, um, you know, as the world champion, you know, I'm someone who stands up for the rights of the world and the people and the plants. It's very noble of the you. Atmosphere very very of noble, yes. I mean, that's what the world champion does. Yes, so. yes, yes. He's somebody who fights what's right. Uh, right. throughout the world <laughs> so and he also knows the world quite well you do yeah, yeah, so uh, um and is always interested in knowing more about the world so that's kind of what the world champion's about and it's uh, you know the world champion personas had many different you know things you know throughout uh it's it's creation you know um but uh you know and also you know the world champion is is uh you know it's a it's a comment on narcissism uh it's a comment on uh you know the basically the theme of the whole project of being you know american exceptionalism and uh the showing off et cetera mm-hmm. so it, it it's all those kind of things um you know i first started i've always been interested and passionate about human rights issues um and even when I was a little kid, you know, I I used to do, when I was like 10 and 11, I used to do my own political cartoons. Mm-hmm. And I remember doing, I did a, a cartoon about Polish uh, workers' rights activist Lech Walesa, uh, you know, from like 1980. And uh, I was 11 when I was doing that. So I, I a couple of years ago, I rediscovered some of my old drawings. My mom saved everything. And I was like, I was like, oh, wow, I was into human rights issues when I was 11. So uh, I guess I've been in this for a while. Yeah. But but I used to not really do any of that in my act. For years, I, I just did uh, stuff that was kind of self-contained and I guess kind of fantasy on some level, or it might be, like I said, satire on exceptionalism and narcissism, um, but, but more in a... You know, sometimes overt, but often just subversive kind of a way mm-hmm. and satirical way. Uh, but about eight years ago, I started doing shows in Europe. And initially, like, you know, when I went to London to do shows, I, I started thinking, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to learn a lot more about this country. And I did. But what I really started learning a lot more was about my own country. Uh, I've said this before, but it's kind of like, um, you know, if you're making a painting and you're working on it for hours and hours or you're working on it for weeks and you're so caught up in it. After a while, it gets hard to get perspective on it. So you need to step away and look at it from, from you know, 50 feet away or you know, 50 meters away. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, or you might need to like not look at it for a month and then come back to it, and then you can actually see it. Or if you're in a bad relationship, you can't see it, but all your friends can see it. Uh, and then a few years later, when you're not in that relationship anymore. You could look back and be like, oh, wow, yeah, that person was not a good person towards me. They were, you know, verbally abusive or psychologically abusive to me. And, and you know, you're able to see it once you get some distance, you know. Yeah. So once I got to the other country, I was uh, able to see, see certain issues with my country from a little better perspective. Because um, when you're in the middle of it, it's, it can be much harder to see stuff. So... Uh, so that's when I really started doing more stuff about, uh, you know, uh, not just material about other countries, but about my own country. Right. And what happened is kind of how I organically work, you know. So, you know, like like the stand-up movie is 84 minutes. I didn't know it was going to be 84 minutes, but, you know, when I was piecing things together and putting things together, it's... That's what it organically came out to. Yeah. You know, you, and, and just like in stand-up, you know, you plan a certain amount of things, 
But then, you know, the, the way I perform, and I think the way you should do any art is, you know, it, it takes a life of its own, and you have to see where it goes. You can't just pre-plan everything. Uh, to me, that that's not stand-up comedy. That's, that's something else, but it's not stand-up comedy. Um, you know, and in my act, you know, and, and in this special, you know, there is a lot of crowd work, and, and some of the bits, you know, um, it's like a mix of prepared material and crowd work. Like, say, for example, the healthcare bit. Yeah. Um, you know, where, I, you know, I, you know, in the special, there's, there, there's, there's part of it where I sort of run a mock town hall, you know, where I say I'm going to be the next president, and then I ask the audience to ask me questions about my presidential platform. Right. So, you know, now when I first initially started doing this several years ago, I didn't have any jokes prepared. I would just come up with stuff on the spot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some of the same subjects would keep coming up, like health care. So, for example, the first time, you know, someone asked it, I already can't remember when it was, but one of the times when people asked me, like, what about health care? I just arrogantly said, we don't need it. We're Americans. We're strong. <laughs> and then I think sometime when they asked that again, I added a line to it. You know, I just improvised on the spot a line to it, you know, where I say, we don't need it. We're Americans. We're strong. Uh, Europeans need it because they're genetically inferior and they have no confidence. <laughs> um, and then I would build more and then just, you know, I just keep building the bit. Uh, I, I do a lot of writing on stage. Uh, in addition to off stage, yeah, yeah, not everyone does. Everyone works differently, but so so that healthcare bit, for example, w was grown over a period of time, and what you see in in this movie is basically, you know, the the, the full bit, but it, it's done in a situation where, you know, that night when I did that bit and where it's performed and where it's in the movie, I didn't even know I was going to do that bit that night yeah. because I knew I was going to launch into my presidential platform stuff, but I didn't know someone was going to ask that question. And I certainly didn't know when they were going to ask that question. So and then some of the things in the special are something that happened that one time, that one night. You know, so it, it, it's a mix of things. You, 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 most of the, the, the special is shot at the Comedy Cellar in New York City. You're talking about different countries, including, I should say, Canada. How does your material work when you're in Canada making fun of Canada? Uh, it's a little different. It's weird. You know, one thing I noticed with the U.S. and Canada, we're so close. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the U.S., this is, oh, this, this is my experience, when you're, when you're raised in the U.S., you, you learn very little about Canada. Um, <laughs> you know, right. like, like there's one part in my, in my special where I talk about how, um, you know, I, I'm, 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 you know, goofing around with someone who's Canadian in the audience, and I'm saying, how we could have invaded you at any point in history, we were just never interested. Yeah. And then I talk about how um, in the 1800s, uh, Canada, you burned down the White House, and we still did not invade you, because we came to the realization that living in Canada was punishment. <laughs> yes. Now, in the U.S., <laughs> now, now that bit I came up with on the spot o over a few different nights when I was talking to someone in the audience from Canada, yeah. and they initially said... Uh, we burned down the White House. And I had never heard that before. Oh. I was not taught that in school. Oh. And then after talking to different people from Canada over the past year or two, I realized, oh, you guys were taught this, and we weren't. Um, and that goes back to some of the American exceptionalism stuff, where if you look at our, you know, and I've become like a big you know, fan of Howard Zinn and some of his books, yeah. as well as some other books, where they kind of teach you history uh, and teach you stuff that you're not taught in history class in school. The people's history, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, so I don't remember ever learning about that. That that you know our White House w was 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 burned down. Uh, I, I don't I don't remember reading that, and I certainly don't remember reading that Canada had anything to do with it. <laughs> you know, so that was like sh I, I thought someone was joking when they first said that to me. Oh, well, yeah. So then I started researching, and I started talking to different. Uh, people I know from Canada about it. So it, it's very interesting. So in the U.S., the way I was brought up, and I think many people were brought up, you're brought up that basically it, it's really kind of what I joked about in the movie, where Canada is just another state that, that many of us haven't visited yet. Uh, many Americans don't really view Canada as anything different. It's just like, oh, yeah, there's Canada too, right. You know, <laughs> you know there's probably, you know, 
20, you know, I think many people are like, oh, there's a bunch of states I haven't really visited, and Canada is one of them, you know, because Canada has some baseball teams, it has some basketball teams, you know, so you're kind of like, oh, yeah, Canada, you know. Um, but then when you go to Canada, you visit it, you realize, you know, I mean, a lot of the things look very similar, but then you start looking around some more, looking a little deeper into things, you're like, oh, there's a lot of a lot of differences yeah, in yeah. and Canada. One of the, you're just not taught those things. Yeah, one of the funniest things from the special that occurs to me as you're speaking is uh, Canada gets American news, America does not get Canadian news. Yeah, yeah. Which is and, very true. And you're, that's starting to happen a little more now with your new prime minister. Yeah. You know, the most, you know, the, the most gorgeous... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, national leader in in in, uh, in the in the history of the world. You know, you're 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 a beautiful man. So yes, it's starting, yes, starting to get more. You know, but <laughs> but anyway, there's that's a whole other uh, issue there. Uh, but it's so yeah. So when I'm doing it in Canada, uh, there are some differences, and sometimes I notice because you know, like I said, how I think America has a superiority complex. I think Canada has a little bit of an inferiority complex, and but there's no reason to be having one. You know, uh, I mean, Canada certainly has its problems, uh, like any country. But Canada's a great country. I think we're and, just fine. We're just fine. It's not an inferiority complex. We're just like it's fine. We don't care. We don't have to right, brag about I, ourselves. I, I do often sense this, this bitterness that of why is America so fucking popular? It's like yeah. we're right here. We, uh, you know, we don't have the violence problem that America d- has. Uh, we're not as imperialistic. Uh, not that you guys don't do that, because I know yeah, yeah, yeah. does yeah. sell a lot of weapons overseas, et cetera. We have but, our problems, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, and, and then, you know, not you guys have health care. It, it's like, so like, so it's kind of like, I, I kind of get that when I do some of the bits and kind of like, hey, why are you ripping on us? We're, we're actually better than you guys. But yeah. that's, that's what I'm making fun of. Oh, hold on. Someone just came into my room. <laughs> Okay, I think they left. I'm in my hotel. Someone just started barging in here. Um, <laughs> wow, I'm Canada. So I'm not worried about it. Um, uh, so, so it it is a little different. And I also try to, you know, have truth behind the stuff that I'm doing. And you know, when I'm, you know, a lot of the material that I'm doing, it, you know, it has. I try to do things so that it has depth to it and has layers to it. I'm, I'm not just making fun of Canada. I'm actually. When I'm any time I'm making fun of Canada, I'm actually also making fun of America. Yes, I'm not making more fun of America. Sure. Yeah. Um. So, and then you know, I try to do bits that aren't you know, bits that you've seen before, so they're not the it's the same old you know stuff that you've heard before. Yeah. I'm trying to do I try you know to do hopefully successful with it do do new stuff. Well, it's a brilliant special, uh, Judah. Where can people learn more about you on the computers? Um, I'm on. Uh, I'm not. I have a Facebook page. I'm really not on it much. Uh, I can only do so much social media. I'm on Twitter, yeah, and Instagram, Facebook as well, but not much. At uh, at Judah World Champ, J U D A H World Champ. Okay. And uh, my website is my name, JudahFriedlander dot com, mm-hmm. and uh, my special uh, America is the greatest country in the United States is streaming worldwide on Netflix. It's brilliant. And uh, do, you, do you have something else coming up that we should know about? Are you working on another project? That's the only thing I'm doing right now. I'm I'm just trying to find a place to live. I'm, I'm technically homeless right now. I'm trying to... I've never owned a place. I'm trying to buy. And so I, I haven't had an apartment in over two months. Oh, oh boy. So I'm trying to do that. Uh, I'm trying to promote the special, yeah. uh, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, and you know, I'm in New York when I'm not on the road and I do shows pretty much every night in New York. And, uh, uh, the next special I think that I'm going to do is going to be an all crowd work special Hmm. and one that's pretty much all stuff that happened that one night. You know, it's not, it's not a mix of bits and crowd work. This one might be just all off the cuff crowd work. The next one. Okay, that well, might be what I'm doing. I'm not sure yet, but that's what I think. Okay, we'll keep an eye out for that. Is there yeah. a, a bit from the Netflix special that I can play for people right now? If there's, is there one sort of section that you can think of? Yeah. Th- we could do something on Canada. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. That sounds great. Judah, this was a, a, a true honor and a pleasure. Thank you for being oh, on the show. Well, and thank you for the love and help, helping me spread the word. I just, 
as an artist, what I try to do is just get my stuff out there and hopefully people see it and watch it and then they can do what they want with it. I hope they watch this. It's really brilliant and I wish you the best of luck with everything going forward. Thank you so much. Any other countries? Canada. Where? Canada. Now, why'd you say that? We were all just having a good time. (laughs) We're all here having fun and you had to say Canada. (laughs) Canada, do you realize we could have invaded you at any point in history? We were just never interested. We actually marched all the way through your country, skipped it, and took Alaska. We're like, you want this? Nah, what about this over here? Hmm, not feeling it. Oh look, Alaska. Canada, in the War of 1812, you burned down the White House, and we still did not invade you. Because we came to the realization that living in Canada was punishment enough. So polite, Canada. So polite. I was just on Canadian Tinder. It was, uh, there was no swipe left. Only swipe left. Too polite to say no to anybody. Well, not my type, but who knows? It could work out. A lot of Canadians hate America. No, you do, but you don't admit it because you're too polite and nice. And you hate us because you think we hate you. But we don't hate you. We just don't notice you. (laughs) Canada's like, hey, America, show us some love. We're Canada. We have free health care, no violence. And we're like, we're busy. (laughs) You see, America, we're like the cheerleaders and the quarterbacks. And Canada is like the nerdy kid who just moved here, even though he's been here the whole fucking time. (laughs) Do you understand what I'm saying? Canada gets American news. America does not get Canadian news. Unless it's a story about a crackhead mayor acting like a stupid American. You see, Canada, when you're better than us, we ignore you. When you dumb it down, we want to hang out. This will sum up the entire Canadian-American dynamic. As an American, you can go to Canada, You don't even have to switch your American money over to Canadian money. That's how friendly and polite they are. They will save you that hassle of going to the exchange place just so that you, a foreigner in their land, can have more free time. Very nice. If a Canadian comes to America and tries to put one little shiny, sparkly Canadian quarter into some dirty slot in an American parking meter, we're like, get that fucking shit out of here. That's the relationship. (laughs) And as a result, Canada has low (laughs) self-esteem. And there's proof in your money. Who is printed on American money? American presidents for the most part. And who is printed on a lot of Canadian money? The Queen of England. (laughs) How do you think that makes the Queen of Canada feel? (laughs) Dear Canada, before you want America to love you, Learn to love yourself. (laughs) We're just a better country, Canada. You only have red and white in your flag. We have red, white, and blue in our flag. That's why we're number one, because we got red, white, and blue in our flag, just like Cuba and North Korea. (laughs) We're a flawless nation. America is the greatest country in the United States. (laughs) You cannot argue that. How does it feel, being in Canada, living so close to greatness, yet so far away at the same time? It feels awesome! Way too much energy for a Canadian. Way too much energy. Creative Control is brought to you by FreshBooks, a ridiculously easy-to-use cloud accounting software for small business owners that saves you time and gets you paid faster. FreshBooks is now used by over 10 million people worldwide, and I want you to try it too. For your free 30-day trial, go to freshbooks.com slash creative control and enter creative control, that's creative with a K, control with a K, in their how did you hear about us section. Stay organized and get paid faster with FreshBooks. Stop worrying about what to make for dinner and start cooking instead. 
HelloFresh Canada will send a box of wholesome ingredients plus a simple to follow recipe right to your Canadian doorstep. Vegetarians, meat eaters, single people, families, there's something for almost everyone. Visit HelloFresh.ca for more info and menu options and use the promo code CREATIVE50 for 50% off your first order. That was Judah Friedlander on the 365th episode of Creative Control, which is part of the Antica Podcast Network and available on all of your preferred podcast platforms. If you can't find an episode that you're looking for, if you wish to learn more about me or sign up for my regularly scheduled newsletter, please visit my website, vishkana.com. Like Creative Control with Vishkana on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at vishcreative.com. Or follow me at Vishkana. You can listen to a radio show version of Creative Control on Wednesdays at noon Eastern Standard Time around the world at CFRU.ca or on an actual radio at 93.3 FM if you're in or near Guelph, Ontario. Also, please consider visiting patreon.com slash creative control to make a flexible monthly donation to keep this podcast going. I will send you a gift uh, of some kind in exchange for your pledges. Uh, I've been trying to do this. Uh, and uh, we can work something out. So send me a message. Again, patreon.com slash creative control. This episode would not be possible without our sponsors, Pizza Trocadero, whom you can call for pickup or delivery at 519-829-2444 or check them out at trocaderoguelph.ca. The bookshelf, an independently owned bookstore, bar, music venue, and movie theater located at 41 Quebec Street in Guelph. Learn more about them at bookshelf.ca. Planet Bean, freshly roasted, fair trade, certified organic coffee, more information, visit planetbeancoffee.com and Granddad's Donuts, located at 574 James Street North in Hamilton, Ontario. Amazing Donuts, granddads.ca. For more info about them. Of course, uh, you've heard about HelloFresh and uh, Fresh Books, so do what I said earlier. Just go to those things and you'll figure it out as well. Well, that's it for another episode. Thank you so much for listening to this one. If you're new to the show... Uh, this is, like I say, 365 episodes deep. There's lots to discover uh, on my website and on the uh, podcast feeds, depending on your player and playback option thing. What? I don't know what that means. Anyway, thank you for listening. Spread the word about the show. Please download episodes of the show and uh, rate and review it on the platforms. All of that stuff helps. And if you have questions for me, send me emails, send me messages. I'm very accessible. Thank you very much. I will talk to you soon. Goodbye. For now.